I wanted to tell you my story. Why? Why did I? Why did I start with this platform? You know. So I I started about fifteen years ago with programming, and I've done many different projects uh, from full stack to the front end to back end, and, and yeah, I've learned a lot. And uh, yeah, of course, there were also a lot of things that I, I I didn't really like about programming. And a couple of them last year, I thought I would. Uh, I thought maybe what can I do about that? You know, so I was tired for one of of researching about new stuff all the time. So for every new project that I needed to set up from scratch, at least. I needed to research uh, about the best way to do that because there's always a better way. And also when I joined another project that I didn't set up myself, uh, it was always a lot of learning because everybody uses a different way, a different stack, and it's always different. And that's, that tired me because I believe that there should, there could be like one best conventional way to, to do things. And it just isn't there, it seems, especially not for, for full stack projects. So besides that, also setting up a new boilerplate, it's just hard. Like every time you have to set up a boilerplate from scratch, spend a lot of time thinking about all the configurations, setting up all the configurations and setting up all the different parts of the boilerplate of the full stack app. So yeah, that takes you just uh, a lot of time that is kind of wasted if you think about it. Because if you kind of repeat that process and just kind of create a boilerplate that you can reuse, that would save you a lot of time, right? So yeah, it appeared to me that there's not really a one size fits all for apps, for full stack apps. There's always a better way. And there's not really a convention when you create a, a full stack app. You have to do a lot of research, figure out all the configurations and create the best way that suits you this app. But what if there was? So the last thing that I was so frustrated about after 15 years of programming is that the projects are always hard to maintain. There's loads of tech debt when you quit it because it's just very hard to, and it takes a lot of work to write documentation and instructions for the next developer. And who likes writing documentation? I think nobody does. So those are enough reasons for me to, to start it, to start to, to create something that improves this, is frustrations. So I wanted to have a, a, a kind of a, a stack or a boilerplate with sensible defaults so that I wouldn't have to research it every time and, and learn new stuff every time. Also, I wanted to make it easy for, for myself and for, for others also, of course, to go from an idea to launch as, as, uh, as quickly as possible and as high quality as possible without forgetting things because it's just kind of uh, all over the place, all the things you need to do for it. And there's lots of things you need to research every time to go to, from idea to launch. It's very, very hard. So also I wanted to make the code base more maintainable by default. So by design, I wanted to find ways to improve that. So that got me started. And about half a year ago, I started with two frameworks. One is called React with Native, and the other one is called Sensible. Uh, so the, the microphone just dropped. Uh, I will just uh, stop this video and go in the next one. Hopefully it's fit. It's, it's still a bit cloudy, but I think this will do. So yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I started uh, like six months ago with React with Native and Sensible. And after three months of using it myself, uh, within my agency, uh, on many, many projects, I think about 10 or more, 
I discovered that it was actually quite useful already. And after a lot of improvements and seeing great results, I decided to also create docs for it. So documentation that helps others also use these frameworks. I open source them and now they're available for everyone. So yeah, you might wonder, of course, what does Sensible do? What does it make a good framework to use for any full stack app? Well, for one, it sets up a, a full stack boilerplate in minutes. So within one CLI command, you can create a backend, a frontend, and uh, very, very many cool conventions that help you to easily work with a full stack code base, a full stack on a repo code base. So that's a very important one. So you can get started really quickly. The second one is a structure. Sensible projects are layered. There's three layers. There's the backbone layer, where you define your floor, which is like your type definitions of all the models that you have and all the endpoints that you have and uh, what, what the type definitions are of those. Also, you have a shared layer for which you define the server um, and the UI. And the UI can be shared between multiple frontends. We, uh, that's why I created the other framework called React with Native. So it lets you share different Different, uh, it lets you share a UI in React and React Native. You can reuse the div, uh, the P, and other HTML tags inside of React Native. So it lets you kind of uh, use uh, React code or HTML inside of Next.js apps, but also inside of Expo apps. Uh, so uh, that's that. Uh, and, and those two layers are very important because it saves you a lot of code. It saves you a lot of time. And the last one is the app layer. And that's where you uh, define all the shells of all the apps, where you don't have a lot of code, but it's also very important to use the, the, the right frameworks. So Expo, Next.js, those are really good frameworks that help you to create a high quality app with lots of features baked in that help you to just make a really good app. So that's the third layer. So combined, any sensible uh, project has those three layers by default. Um, and then uh, besides that, uh, when you create a new sensible app, it kind of includes create next app and create expo app by default. So those uh, CLIs are ran when you create a new sensible app. So it doesn't try to reinvent the wheel. It's just uh, reusing those CLIs because they are very powerful to, to create a, a good expo and, and the next app. Also, it, uh, it lets you, like I already said, uh, it lets you share code between Expo and Next Apps, which is a huge uh, advantage for me because many projects I do, they end up to need uh, an Expo app and a Next app because they want to be good on the web with good uh, static site generation and server side rendering, but they also want uh, the power of the, the native. So they want Android and iOS apps, and that's why we need Expo. Um, so uh, the last two advantages uh, of Sensible is one, we have a complete type safety between the front and the backend. And I think this is the most amazing, uh, exciting uh, advantage of, of Sensible because it lets you, uh, when you define the types in your core, uh, you define your endpoints and your interfaces, it will automatically create an API function for you that when you use it, it will show you all the endpoints that you have, and it will show the exact type definition of those endpoints. It will auto-complete it for you. So that, that creates a huge advantage because you are not getting confused and you don't have to read any documentation for applying any API endpoint into your content. Uh, besides that, there's also complete type safety on the backend because if you have defined the endpoint uh, type definition, all you need to do to create a new endpoint is called a make endpoint function. And that has complete type safety again for on the backend. So besides that, like I already said, in the core, you can define your type interfaces and endpoints in a single place. So it's a very clear overview for you. And the last exciting uh, advantage about Sensible is that it automatically generates developer documentation for your endpoints and type interfaces. Uh, so whenever you define your, your, your core uh, interfaces, 
and whenever they change, it will regenerate your uh, meta metadata for your for your type interfaces, and it will show those on the documentation. This way, it will be very hard for new developers to get stuck because they can just read the documentation and see everything that's there. There's many many ideas uh, we have for Sensible in the future, but this is the start. And this is already a huge advantage for me in my agency, and I hope it will also be a big advantage for you. Thank you.